Hey guys and welcome to Mickey Art. Today I'm going to do something I haven't done before. Um, one of the things that has been going on um, in one of the paintings I did recently, or two of the paint, three of the paintings actually, um, is I've been getting, and I'm, let's see if I can show you. Can you see these lumps? It almost feels like sandpaper. And I know I put glitter in this one, but this is definitely not the glitter because it's not in the other two. Um, so what I am planning to do today is to give it a go at straining. So what um, I actually don't know which of my paints it was that had the lumps in it. And it's actually not relevant because they're all finish those ones anyway so what I've done is I have mixed up some more of this paint and I think it's to do with me using this old paint um, airplane time I bought this from uh, a shop in town and it was on super special because it was old and some of the tubes have come out really cool like the blue that mixes up beautifully no problem this one is a bit gluggy right the way through to the burnt umber which was disgusting so what I and I was listening to Debbie from Acrylic Pouring and she was saying that she strains her paint and I was like huh that's a good idea and then when I went looking for something that said straining how to strain your paint I could only find how to do like 10 litre pails of roof paint, ceiling paint or wall paint or whatever. So I thought I'd do you a video. This is my first attempt at this. So basically what they've said in the strain 10 litre pails is get some old nylons, stockings, whatever you want to call them, and um, strap it over the top of an empty container and literally just pour it through. So I've mixed up this green to the consistency that I like it and let's see if I can get you to see, show you the, can you see in there those little lumps? Now I don't know whether this is going to be going to get those out or not, but let's give it a go. So literally I'm just going to, whoop! No, not like that. <laughs> it does need to have some give. Pour it in. I'm holding, I'm using the stick to hold down the nylon into the pot, otherwise it was just going to pour over the edges. does seem to be going through okay so that's cool um, this is a brand new mix and a brand new tin so there's nothing gunky on the sides so I can scrape it all out wow where's that dark green come from it's a clean stick too how does it get any better than that who knows Get all of that paint out of there. Now you are going to lose some paint, but hey, that's the name of the game. It's better to lose a bit of paint with all the lumps in it than have lumps. So, my next trick... <laughs> will be because what I did was I put the stocking over the tin right down to the toe and then I tied it off to hold it on and I didn't really think about <laughs> getting it off again how's it getting any better than this all right so what I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to run my craft knife around the bottom of the tin and the bottom so that the dust particles from cutting it 
doesn't get in the paint because that would be totally against what I'm trying to create with straining it until I've got a big enough hole to get it off not quite so I think I might do this different next time what do you reckon? Okay. So there we have it. Still some paint coming through there. But most of it's gone. And then we'll just pop that in the bin. And have a look at our paint. Oh my goodness, that's so much better. Awesome. And I think the only things that I can see in there are actually air bubbles. But it's definitely a lot cleaner than it was. So if you've been wondering how to deal with those lumpy, bumpy bits in your paint, and also in your flow troll. I've heard people talking about having lumps in their flow troll. So you could probably do exactly this with your flow troll. How does it get any better than that? So I hope this has been a contribution and I hope you can put it to good use. And I'll see you in another video. Cheers.